Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fighter. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between August 26th and 2nd of September 2017. So, I hope you had an amazing eclipse. I hope it was healing and purifying and spiritual most of all and that you enjoyed it, that there is not too many un positive changes in your life and that everything is working out. So this week, what do we have this week? We have Mercury in Kazemi. First of all, on the 26th and the 27th, we have a state of Kazemi. It's Mercury in the heart of the sun. It's retrograding and it's meaning the sun. And in the time of the retrograde, this is a time that Mercury is much more powerful. This is a time that the sun gives its power and its light to the planet of Mercury. So they say that this is a good time to actually think about our next steps, our next steps in life, our next steps regarding creating and providing a healthier, better life for ourselves and for other people around us. It's in Virgo and um, it's all about providing a better relationship or um, reaching a better relationship between our mind and our body between our spiritual cap capabilities and our physical needs, between our aspirations and our, constrict uh, our constrictions since we live on the ground of reality and in and a material plane. All of these are very good subjects and of course the service that we give. So Mercury in Kazemi is a good time to um, sign contracts, to make long-term decisions. It's a good time within the retrograde. Usually they say this is not such a good time within a retrograde to sign any agreements, to make long-term decisions. But I want to tell you that people are too afraid of a Mercury retrograde. You can't stop living within a Mercury retrograde. I signed the contract for this apartment um, a, a few Mercury retrogrades ago, and I love it. My astrology teacher, Maurice Fernandez, brought his last car on a Mercury retrograde, and that was fine. So it's not about stopping to live or making decisions or, or getting ahead in life. It's about knowing that right now your um, logical capabilities and your mind all work a little differently, and we have to look at the smaller details, we have to look at the small print, but once we do that, everything is okay. So this is a good time within that Mercury retrograde to actually visualize how you want to get ahead in all these uh, Virgos, Virgo aspects. How do we calculate our next steps in life regarding heightening health, hygiene, and the betterment of ourselves and our fellow men all around us. The 26th itself could be a sensitive day in terms of relationships and we come from a sensitive time towards uh, in, in terms of relationships with that square between Uranus and Venus that was at its height yesterday but it's still not uh, totally disappearing we have Venus in a T-square with Uranus uh, opposite, opposite the moon in Scorpio on the 26th so this is a day to actually be very careful with how we behave within relationships, knowing that we have a shorter fuse, knowing that we could be more rebellious, knowing that we could have a short temper, and just look at that drama from the side, not letting it rule us. On the 27th, Jupiter sextile Saturn that just came out of retrograde. So during the next uh, couple of weeks, we can feel that it's easier for us to reignite progress in our life, to grow up and mature and structure our life, that things are working the way we want it to work, that doors are opening in the right places regarding our career or our um, responsibilities as adults in front of other people, AI career. <laughs> so. Jupiter sextile Saturn is a very positive aspect in the, st in the sky right now along with the uh, movement to, a, to direct movement by Saturn. This is a good thing for all of us. This is a good thing for our progress and our maturation processes and everything concerning our job and our roles in front of other people in the public. 
Mars is on the north node on the 26th, the 27th, the 28th. First of all, that heightens Mars a lot, you know, that really strengthens him. And Mars is the planet of male energies, the planet of uh, um, initiative, the planet of war, the planet of anger, the planet of carnal desires. When Mars is on the North Node, we could feel like the wildfire is, is getting too close. We can feel like uh, there's too much combustion all around us, that people flame up whether it is uh, verbally or physically and we really need to pay attention not to take part within that dance not letting aggression and drama uh, overtake our logic and rule us as well this is however a very good time to assertively progress not aggressively but assertively progress towards our goals in life this is a time of achievements this is a time of moving forward and that's a good thing it's a time for action just be careful from aggression or accidents around you on the 28th we have the moon in Scorpio already not so emotionally stable squaring Mars in Leo on the north node so that Mars in Leo on the north node a lot of ego there and a lot of honor and um, self-importance and that moon, sensitive moon in Scorpio, dramatic moon in Scorpio, is squaring it. So this is really a day to keep away from drama. This is a day to be extra logical. This is a day to take our volume and turn it way down. And it's a better day to adapt a much more feminine and a much calmer and softer attitude towards yourself and people in your life don't let those male energies overtake you on the 29th we have the moon conjunct saturn in sagittarius we could feel a little rejected or not supported enough not honored enough sometimes not even understood by people who are supposed to be our caretakers or our better or our elders so everything Saturnian, you know, it could be either our bosses at work, it could be our parents, it could be, um, um, it could be our man, our our partner, and we can feel a little bit misunderstood and unsupported. We can feel like our confidence is shaken. So just acknowledge that there's an effect in the sky that we are all affected by. Take it under proportions. Um. Don't be too harsh of a judge, not towards yourself, not towards others. On the 31st of August, Mercury retrograde enters Leo. Now, I told them, I told them, do not go into Leo. But this Mercury, he doesn't listen. He just went into Leo. And I told him many times, do not go into Leo. Why are you going into Leo? Don't you like it in Virgo? Why are you going back into Leo? And now I have to explain what it means that he goes into Leo. And I don't even know what kind of accent I did. So when Mercury goes into Leo, we can rethink our progress regarding the things that we actually create in life, regarding the things that we take part in, the things that sum up, sum up what it is we are and the light that we emit towards the world, our essence. So we can rethink everything concerning these solar subjects and we can see the faults we can see the faults in how we've behaved and how we moved forward and amend amend our way amend our progress and 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 walk a new road forward we cannot expect to go on creating in the same way to go on doing and 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 emitting our light being who we are in the same way and getting different results if we want to get different results we have to change ourselves and this is what mercury bringing in the cerebral influence into the heart of the sun uh, and and of course the sun is connected to our hearts and to our passion and to our love so we have the cerebral influence coming into all of this emotional arena 
helping us make sense of how to better answer our needs in a smarter way, how to realize who it is we want to become and what it is we want to create in a smarter way. I told him to not go into Leo, but he is going into Leo. I'm sorry, didn't get much sleep last night and you're suffering because of it. I hope you forgive me. So um, on September 1st, we have the moon conjunct Pluto in Capricorn and Mars conjunct Mercury in Leo all through September 2nd as well. And September 3rd, we could still feel it, the Mars conjunct Mercury in Leo. So first of all, moon conjunct Pluto, drama, making mountains out of molehill, becoming too intense, too obsessive. And just take yourself, pull yourself out of the situation and look at it from above. Remain logical. Don't get too emotional. And this is what I can say about Moon conjunct Pluto and Capricorn, especially in places of work and towards people uh, under your authority or authority figures. And the Mars conjunct Mercury in Leo can really make us speak before we think, can make us blurb out things that can actually hurt us or other people around us, can make us heat up and, and, and really flame up regarding our discussions, our verbal communication. And of course this is in Leo, this is all about honor, this is all about our place on the stage, this is all about dignity, this is all about pride. So we just be reminded that this is in the sky right now and move away from that, move away from that pride, move away from that honor, from that uh, need to be acknowledged in a sense and understand that we have to really calculate whatever comes out of our mouth right now and breathe before we actually some answer somebody or react to something and think about the effects that it will create or else and one more very important point we i said before we come from a sensitive time in relationships we have Aegea, the goddess of health and hygiene conjunct juno the goddess of family and hearth and everything that we are loyal to conjunct in the sky all through the week. This is a time to take the relationships that you are loyal to, the long-term relationships in your life. And of course, your primary relationship is first. That means everything that you are loyal to in life, that you have a relationship with. It can be things in your work. It can be people in your work. It could be in your personal life, it could be in your creativity or in your, uh, with your children, whatever it is, whatever, whenever there is a relationship that you are committed to over a long period of time, and Aegea is conjunct that place, that Juno right now, it means this is a time to amend, this is a time to cleanse, this is a time to heal, this is a time to heighten the hygiene of those relationships that we are loyal to in our life. This is a time to concentrate on healing the places that have become a little inflamed or too sensitive. So saying that, I want to leave you and hope that you're going to have a very positive and beautiful week. I want to thank you for listening. And I have the first Evolutionary Astrology webinar course opening up in October in English. So you can join in from wherever you are around the world through your smartphone or through your computer and I'd love to give you more details contact me and if you say you saw this message on the video you're going to get 10% off the course's price and of course for private consultations or any questions you might have private lessons as well I'm more than happy to hear from you this is Boaz Feiler signing out goodbye